Well, welcome everyone. It is great to be with you today. I'm Kristen Hammett, and I am so glad you have joined us for yet another signatory webinar, and this time on Year End Giving and Giving Tuesday. I know many of you are perhaps still um, planning a vacation, or you're in the mode of buying school supplies, or wrapping up summer plans, and it's hard to think but sure enough, soon enough, we will be indeed in the middle of fourth quarter giving. And we want to get ahead of the game and equip you to begin planning and thinking um, so you can have an effective year end. Um, as always, uh, the signatory is here to equip you in your development efforts and a partner with you. Um, and as you develop your donor relationships, please always view us as a key resource for your training, your community, and partnership um, as you work with your donors. So a couple of quick reminders before we jump into today's topic. Um, always uh, know that we'd love to engage with you and um, engage in communication and discussion on our Facebook group. Connect with me on LinkedIn. I try to share um, tidbits of donor development, um, insights and strategies on LinkedIn from time to time. And then as always, pass this webinar on to others. We want to hold this information very open-handed to equip as many of you as possible, um, really to elevate your development strategy and your relationships with donors. So please share this with those inside and outside of your organization whom you believe would benefit. Okay, um, we are excited today to really engage in this topic with someone who spends a lot of time working in this field of online fundraising and giving. We um, are thrilled to have Masterworks Scott Ahern join us today. And he is going to share with us, um, just like many of us want to know, how can we approach this year end and Giving Tuesday really in a strategic way? And how can we communicate effectively um, with our donors? So they will be thinking of us as they make those donations, certainly the last uh, last portion of the year. We know that in December, we see the bulk of um, giving. So we certainly want to be equipped to communicate with them effectively. So Scott is the Vice President of Client Strategy at Masterworks. He has worked with many different organizations and raised millions online. He has worked in technology and marketing, both in nonprofit and for-profit se sectors. So um, I know he's great at looking for innovative ways to engage audiences, and I look forward to learning from him today. So welcome, Scott. Well, thank you, Kristen. Um, I'm excited to be here. And while, uh, Kristen, as you mentioned, it seems early to talk about year end, uh, but our agency, I know that we're already buzzing and talking about strategies and thinking about direct mail and uh, various impacts that, that are going to going to hit the communication calendar. So, uh, you know, we, this is an appropriate time and, and thank you for those that can join us that are in summer and vacation mode. Um, so we're excited to get started. Um, so, and I, one of the things I did want to note, and I think um, Kristen's good at this is, you know, anytime during um, the session, if there's, if there's questions or some sort of feedback, we'd be glad to field that way, that through the, the Q and A and, um, and, and Kristen can be that facilitator and, and kind of expressing those questions. Um, you know, we want this to be an interactive and a, and a learning session as much as it is me just, just actually, you know, get, disseminating information. So the first thing that uh, we all know, I think for those of us that have been in the, the fundraising world for a while, and for me it's been, um, you know, over 15 years, um, that year end is the most critical fundraising time for most nonprofit organizations. So depending on your mix, if you're thinking about, and especially as we're kind of talking today about, you know, that mass audience, how do we generate revenue from that mass audience from your, your key donors? Um, that is typically the time that people are, are giving the most. Um, generosity flourishes um, at, at, at year end for a number of reasons. Um, you know, the, the tax deductible, um, but also just the, 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 the fact that it, it's, it's the last opportunity really for that year to give. Um, so what we've generally seen over a course of years, this is an older slide, 
but that nearly a third of annual giving happens in December. And it's really, really critical. Um, oftentimes, many different organizations are on different fiscal years. Um, the organizations that we work with that are on the July to June fiscal year, um, it, it's a little bit less stressful than those that are on the calendar year, particularly because everything is geared towards that, that last month of the year to, to make or break without much room to pivot. Um, and, and looking even further at those, the, at the month of December, really the last three days um, of the year make up 12% of all annual donations. And, and that's pretty astounding when you think of, of the impact. Really a, a couple years ago, and, and what I'm gonna be talking about today, I think uh, primarily it's gonna be digital focused. Um, we've had a lot of our clients move in that direction. I think most of our clients have been asking about, you know, what, what do we do in year end? There's, there's an expansive opportunity online. Uh, we know that um, the internet is global. So how do we reach that audience with the right message at the right time? And what we're finding since 2015, depending on where your organization is, we have, we have older organizations that were around for 70 years that have kind of made that transition where more than half of new donors for our clients were choosing to make their first gift online. So the industry is definitely shifting uh, you know, to online. Now, what we generally see is, is the, the, the active donors are still given to direct mail. So a bulk of the revenue is still coming through direct mail. Very important strategy, but as we, as we begin to think where people want to engage and what people want to do, online becomes really the focal point um, for, for at least today's conversation and, and where we're going. Hey, Scott, can I ask a quick question to that point? Um, I read something just last week that you know direct mail isn't dead and it is driving some of those online donations do you have any um, evidence of that in your work with clients do you see that in in the clients that you work with um i, I think that it's driving all of it but that it can drive some yeah we, we do see um really the the direct mail people are choosing to respond with half a new donors coming in online with that being the, the, an easier channel to engage. Many yeah. people, uh, boomers included, are, are, they trust, trust giving online. We're using Amazon today. So to go online and, and give a donation is becoming easier. We do see it a little bit less going the other way. So if, if we've acquired a donor online, we see less of those people actually giving or responding to direct mail. Yeah. So it, it's definitely, um, that, that shift is happening. And we've, We've measured that. We've had some, some studies around that that we've, we're starting to test into to figure out some cost savings and where we can, can really leverage that. But that's a, a great question. So some of the context here uh, is that Facebook and YouTube continue to dominate. And I would say for your organization, um, you know, you need to have, depending on, on your file mix, um, you know, a, a solid direct mail, uh, you know, a program and, and a strategy there. But as we begin to look at reaching people, reaching your existing donors, as we begin to think about the, the fact that, that open rates on email could be 10 or 20%, if that's the case, that eight out of 10 people aren't actually seeing any of your online communications if you're not messaging on other channels. And it's begun, begun to be critical to move in that direction. Out of all the online channels, we do see that Facebook be, is, is still dominating in many ways. So a lot of these other channels that we'll talk about are great for audience building. Um, you know, Instagram is definitely creeping up. Recently is going to go through a name change. I think Instagram from Facebook is going to be the new name, um, par particularly to get the awareness that Instagram is a Facebook product. Um, and so the idea that Facebook and Instagram, the two most popular channels that people are using, are owned by the same company shows a significant opportunity in, in actually reaching a, a demographic across the board. My 93 year old grandma uses Facebook. So messages that are going to her uh, as she's logging in to look at pictures of her kids, she's, she's, she's someone that is gonna be interacting um, on that platform. A couple of platforms that, you know, we're always getting the question, you know, around fundraisers. Well, what else should we be paying attention to? You know, I know that Facebook and there's this mass exodus, and we'll talk about that in the next slide, that's happening on Facebook. Um, 
really, as we begin to look at this, Snapchat and Instagram are especially popular among that younger generation. And I'm assuming that in the next decade or so, I mean, we're going to see things shift. Um, but Facebook's got a pretty solid place in the market in terms of the demographic that fundraisers want to reach. And we talk about that expendable income. Uh, but, you know, these are platforms that we can still pay attention to. One of the reasons that Facebook and a platform like Instagram is so popular is because of the news feed. You're looking at pictures from your best friend. You're looking at pictures from, you know, your, your, your wife, your, you know, your, your family members. And in there, in between, a very intimate place that you're engaging with people that you like and things that you want to follow, you could see an ad about an organization that could, that could pique your interest. And, and it's, very, it's very different than the display ads that we see, and we'll talk about a little bit of the media mix across the internet in terms of, of the results that we're seeing and why Facebook has been uh, popular among fundraisers um, and even just general popular in, in the social channel. Uh, one of the reasons Facebook has uh, been, uh, you know, popular among fundraisers is just the high usage rate. And, and this is pretty amazing is that when you think about the number of users, and I don't have the number off, off hand, but the roughly three quarters of Facebook users visit the site on a daily basis. And so, and this was, you know, a survey conducted on February 7, 2019. So to speak of a maximum uh, a massive exodus on Facebook, uh, you know, in terms of where we are today and the demographic that most fundraisers want to reach, um, that, that isn't really playing out statistically, at least according to the surveys. Um, and if you're like us and many other people in our agency, you know, you're, you probably have questions around how the survey was run and who was targeted, but you know, we're, we're going to trust in this, in this angle that, that Pew Research has, has some validity and, uh, and uh, these numbers play out. But, but nonetheless, there's a huge percentage that are using on a, on a, on a pretty, pretty uh, regular basis. So really, as we look at, at year end, um, you know, we want to kind of lay the foundation um, for, for how we should approach year end, what, what we should be thinking about. Um, one of the things that, that the, the three elements that we talk about here are really what is the strategy that's going to be the the foundational thing what do we want to do what's the what's the creative how are we going to match that to the audience and then what are the analytics and how do we measure it and analytics you know depending on the following year i would even switch this and put analytics strategy and creative right um so it depends on where you are in in light of your year in fundraising if you're brand new you need to start with a strategy if you've been doing this for years, I would start with the analytics and begin to look at what has worked in the past. But really at the end of the day, if you know, you're like me who was on the client, like I worked for two nonprofits for a decade of my life, um, this is essentially everything that you should be doing, but this is actually you, your resources to do any of this, right? So it's pretty overwhelming. So as I talk, just know I've been in your shoes um, you know, we, we're all at different, different places, you know, uh, as a, or I've been able, I've had the privilege to work with ministries like Compassion International. You know, I've also worked with local missions of uh, those sizes of their teams are much different. And so the capacity in which, what they can handle and what they can do is much different. And so as we look at this, um, and, and we look at these kind of 10 outline of, of what, what, how to think about your end. You, you may just want to simplify that down to a few different areas that you're going to really pay attention to. So we've, I, I put in 10 keys to success in thinking about year end. The number one thing that we see across the board right now with all of our clients is that a good offer is essentially the start to a great campaign, great campaign. So if there's any place to start, it's to look at your offer um, because this can make or break your year end. Um, this can make or break a campaign. Um, this can make or break conversion rates. There's, there's so many things down the line that this is, this is really hinging on. Um, and you, the, I've used a, a ministry that we, we've worked with, um, Open Doors, um, with Brother Andrew as a sample, and we'll get into a case study at the end. Um, in terms of what they've done. 
but you'll see things like double your impact, right? Uh, deadline, right? This is a Giving Tuesday sample. Um, you know, clear calls to action to reduce friction um, in terms of the giving uh, of, of allowing users to give. Um, those are all key and, and also measuring or, or pairing not only what the giving is about, but with what, what it's going to impact. Because oftentimes that emotional, you know, giving and philanthropy is it's an emotional part of, 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 of an individual, right? It's something that wants to give to a particular cause and, and an extension of what they believe in their heart that they can do to make an impact. But some of the, the tips for developing a good offer, um, you know, there, I know there's been a lot of buzz around the tax deductible giving, but, you know, in terms of, you know, think about mass donors, I think, you know, uh, major donors may take a hit in that area. But um, as, as we begin to, to think about that, this is the last opportunity of the year to give a, a tax deductible gift. Um, urgency um, is, is critical. And what's nice is that not only on December 31st, but Giving Tuesday has now become a real player in terms of a, a, the, a single day of giving. And that, that is, is a natural deadline that you can start to use urgency. Um, use things like donor-focused messaging. Be clear about what your donors have accomplished you know, in years past and what they can do in the future. Demonstrate the, the need with compelling language describing a problem, a challenge, or shortfall. And statements like your generous tax deductible gift by the end of the year will go to work immediately to, so to give a sense that they're gonna make a difference. And the, the organizations that become the conduit between the dollar given and the impact are the ones that we see that are the most effective. Um, that's why certain organizations that do sponsorship, when you're sponsoring a child, you're having this one-to-one -one, um, you know, opportunity to, to uh, to make a difference. Scott, one thing I've been beginning to share with folks relative to the tax deductible piece is I think it's still wise, obviously, to continue to communicate that. But we know that there are probably some folks that are wrestling with whether or not I give because I'm, I'm going to just get the automatic deduction anyway. I'm not going to itemize. Where's the benefit? We know that Christian ministries are somewhat insulated from that, um, but not completely. And I think what's really my advice to those of you wrestling with, what do I do? How do I message this tax deductible piece is really ensure that you're emphasizing the impact because regardless of tax deductibility, you still need those funds to impact, have the impact with the population that you serve. So um, I would ensure, and I know that Scott has talked about this and probably will be talking about it further, um, but ensuring you're communicating the work that's being accomplished, the impact of gifts, because that doesn't change no matter what the tax law does, the need for that gift to impact your community or your population is not going to change. Yeah, that, and that's a great point. I think, um, what we've seen in the past is that tax deductible giving with or without generally with mass donors that are giving like lower giving amounts does not, we don't see as much of a decline as we do in the major giving, like major donor giving. So in, in, with respect to that, the messaging point just communicates a natural deadline. You know, it's the end of the year, but to your point, the, the, you know, the demonstrating the need with compelling language describing the, the problem, the challenge, the shortfall, and the impact is, has got to be front and center. Yep. Good. So as we begin the thinking, and, and this is why it's great that we're starting so early, um, at least with, with this webinar, is, is really de the developing a plan is really critical. Um, oftentimes year end can be put off until October, um, November and uh, ministries and, and I've been there too where we're scrambling to determine what is our strategy and, and what do we want to accomplish um, and so to start earlier and I, the next slide is going to kind of lay out um, you know the, the campaign brief but but part of the message here is when we're thinking about that plan think about the holistic donor journey right each impact we've had um, and, and especially if we think about digital we think about mail you know, multiple impacts and, and looking over the course of the campaign to see how much revenue came in. 
And you're going to see how this is going to play out, especially from an online strategy where we're, where, where it's more cost effective to try to keep your brand in front of your constituents. Right. And we can do that with in, engagement type content, not just fundraising type content, but to really inspire someone so that when it is time to give that year end gift, you're, you're front and center on their mind as the organization to give to. But in terms of de developing a plan, um, you know, again, um, you know, we, we, I have complex plans. So some of them are two pages, um, but I've literally ha written campaign briefs that have been 25, 30 pages and, and been very complex, reaching different audiences, different things that we plan to test. But, you know, here are some of the main things that you, you want to consider is what are your target audience groups? You know, um, how have you broken that down? Have you looked at your active donor, your zero to 12, your 12 to 20, your, your lapsed audience, your super lapsed audience? Um, you want to look at offer selection. You know, can we get a matching grant? Is that, is that, a, is that an opportunity here with, a, uh, you know, one of your major donors that, that wants to make an even greater impact? Um, key message and supporting points, um, you know, uh, user pathways, um, technical requirements, channel strategies, and, and then finally some testing strategies as well. So looking at what, what do we want to learn this year that we can then carry over to the following year. One of the things that we've begun to shift is we begin to think about Giving Tuesday. Um, I would say five or six years, years ago, um, and just to illuminate, illuminate um, or it was Convio, it was like, I think it's Luminate, Blackbot, who owns them, it comes out with a, a survey each year, has really laid out, and I would encourage you if you don't have that, to, to look for that online. Um, but they, they really show the impact that Giving Tuesday has, has made on uh, giving of constituents. And so when we used to talk about year end, it was kind of the December, the last two weeks of the year. Um, but now as we begin to think about year end, Giving Tuesday is really a, a, a viable strategy that really kicks off our year end season. And so we kind of break it down in, in, in terms of three phases. Is one a week before Giving Tuesday, leading up to Giving Tuesday, is it almost its own campaign, what we call like phase one. And then thinking about the first three weeks kind of up to Christmas in terms of a December campaign and what you want to message to your constituents as kind of a phase two. And then finally that last week, essentially the day after Christmas through New Year's um, is, is really that phase three where we're going to really double down on, on driving urgency and, and uh, using um, you know, that, that kind of language. Oftentimes that year end giving is, is going to be allocated towards where needed most. Um, you know, occasionally in, in December or Giving Tuesday, we might have, have uh, funds allocated to, towards a project. Giving Tuesday works particularly well, I would say, in thinking about um, designation. If you do have something that you can designate and, and offer a project with a matching grant, that, that is where you're going to see that really. Um, the, the results really amplify. Key number four, as we begin to look at this, is to really leverage all channels um, to increase donor touch points. So as you begin to think about your campaign brief, uh, many of these channels work in, uh, you know, work together. So as you begin to think about your mail, as you begin to think about telemarketing, as you begin to think about, you know, if there's a radio campaign, that, radio campaign that's relevant, as you begin to think about what you're doing in, in social media and across the board, um, really begin to think about multi-channel. Again, the resource issue becomes, um, you know, can, can be a problem. And so you may have to scale that to be appropriate to what you can do. Um, but again, as many channels as you can leverage, uh, we're finding that that's just a greater opportunity amongst all the noise in today's world and 1.5 million nonprofits in the U.S. Uh, that if we can, we can increase the channels that we can leverage, um, we, we have a greater chance to get our message in front of that, that those donors.
You know, Scott, I really love that visual that you just had up. Yeah, I think that slide's great. I, for those of you um, with smaller ministries maybe engaging, this presentation will be available to you tomorrow. I would encourage you to print that visual out just to help you. What I like about it is it helps you track your call to actions. Where, where am I going to direct someone? It helps you just kind of map that out. I love, though, at first glance, all the dotted line arrows make me a little crazy. When you start looking at them, it really helps you map out strategy and how are people going to be over kind of receiving the same message from different venues so uh, or different platforms or channels. So I think that this is a really great tool for anyone tuning in today. Um, that this can help you think, okay, what's my call to action? What makes the most sense? Where am I directing them? What message are they getting there? How am I keeping the messaging similar in all of these channels? So I think that's a great, great piece of information. Absolutely. So really in the, in the recent years, um, depending on where you are as an organization, if you kind of dove into uh, digital media or not, um, one of the things that's really changed is that just a simple pixel that's placed on the landing page that as we begin to direct people to your site, um, we can know a number of data points about that person. And the benefit today is we're building audiences, not based only on the pixel. We're uploading email lists to Facebook and they're matching data. We're out uploading uh, your CRM data to Facebook and, and what we call our demand site platform where we can run display ads, uh, where we can do IP retargeting. There's a lot of different opportunities, but we can know a lot of data about people. And that this could change in the next decade. And so with all the privacy laws that, that you, you've probably been aware of that's coming down in, in Europe, um, but in terms of today, it's really beneficial. Um, and, and it really is an exciting opportunity to, to know that those that are landing on your site, you can retarget them with content. And so we can begin to hit not only your active audience, but potentially even a new audience at that point. Hey, Scott, quick question for you there. Um, since I'm out of the tactical day-to-day, -day, um, how does this pixel for somebody who's got a website and things are kind of churning as they, they would deem it, um, they have their landing page, how do they, A, check to see if they have this pixel or B, get one, um, is this something just a web developer can do or somebody within their marketing, their marketing group? How does yeah, that work? That would, so Facebook or um, a number of these other platforms, they actually have a little snippet of code. Got it. Within that code, that kind of allows, that's where the, the pixel lives. So what you would need is a web developer, depending on your website, um, just the addition of that code onto your site. Ideally, um, it goes throughout your site, including all your donation pages and, you know, your website, but ensuring that it's, it's somewhere that it lives throughout. And then you can begin to create audiences. So those audience can be, um, especially in Facebook, by the URL. So you can put in your donation page URL, like your thank you page, and be like, you can set an audience of those that landed on the donation page, but did not make it to the thank you page, um, you know, that we actually retarget them with specific content. And so just in, in, in this strategy alone for organizations, depending on how big or small you are, by setting up some retargeting campaigns, you will automatically increase revenue. Like this is like the no brainer in terms of those that are interested in your, in your organization that are coming to your website, you can actually trigger an offer to them specifically. This is really like when I'm shopping online and I decide not to purchase and that retailer emails me an hour later and says, did you forget something? What can we do to, you know, essentially get you to press buy? Yeah. That's, that's what this is. It's the same functionality. Is that correct? It is. And that kind of the old age of like, you need seven brand touches before you need to make a decision. Yeah. Stuff is hitting us so fast nowadays on the on, online that we're getting so many of those brand touches that by the time we make a decision, we can't even look back to know how many touches yeah. that we as a consumer actually were hit with before we made that decision or what influenced. And part of that is that this idea that we can be in so many different channels. So we can, we can now be in, in display ads, you know, if you're going to leverage, um, you know, the Google display network or, or a demand side platform, 
We can be in Facebook and put it, something in the news feed. We can be in native ads. I mean, if you want to extend it out, all of a sudden you're in uh, YouTube, right? And you're in a, a commercial. So there's so many things that are happening that are beyond our control, but there's somebody behind that spend, behind that commercial on YouTube that is targeting you. And more specifically and, and more intentionally than they've ever been able to do before. Yeah. So as we begin to break this down, here are, just some, here are the, the kind of the five prongs that we begin to look at in digital media. Again, I mentioned if there's anything that you were to do as an organization, I would pay attention to social, that, and particularly Facebook, right? And Facebook and Instagram now, you, when, you're, when you're doing your buying, you, you, can, you can really allocate some spend to both. Um, but social would be the number one. Um, but outside of that, things like display, are, it's a great opportunity to essentially follow or to get some of those more, more of those brand touches across the internet because not everybody uses Facebook. I mean, we know that, um, you know, as we saw, people log in once a day, but if you took the number of people that are actually logging onto the internet and probably landing on a page that has a display ad, you've increased your kind of your footprint in terms of who you can reach, you know. And then we go to other tactics like video. Native is, is I don't have a sample here, but if you go to you know, a, a, a one of your popular news sites, you'll often see a little box down below the main content called paid content that um, is an opportunity for, for organizations to put some engaging content to, to potentially draw some, some interest in terms of their organization. We often use that kind of content um, to first engage and identify someone that would be interested. And then what we can do is retarget them through Facebook or other means in terms of tr try to identify them to converting or becoming a donor to our organization. And then search is the most prevalent, right? We, we still see um, people are using Google searches, you know, almost every single day. And so um, putting that content up and ensuring that your brand is, is, is uh, you know, really, that top spot. Um, oftentimes, if you have a brand name or your organization name overlaps with another organization name or somebody could be bidding. So one of the things that I recommend people do is, is just go and type in your organizational name in a Google search and see what comes up. Um, and th if there are other organizations that do not have your name and that are bidding on your name, um, you can actually go back to Google and request them to stop. It's a because it, it is your brand and, and you can protect that brand. So, um, so one of the things, um, you know, we, we get some questions oftentimes, depending on where you are in your, your new donor acquisition, um, you know, uh, people are thinking, hey, year end is a great time. You know, I need to meet my, my acquisition goals, right? The problem with that is you begin to think about, especially online channels, um, is that CPMs, the cost to reach people typically goes up. And so it becomes more expensive. And so in terms of actually get, and then you also impact the, what, what's, the other thing that, that really affects that is that you have so much competition at your end. So all these organizations are trying to reach the same individual. And oftentimes we're, we're trying to build up throughout the full year to get to the end of the year to, to really secure that year-end donation or, or actually or ensure that those that we've been reaching and communicating to are going to give to our organization. So I would say in terms of you think about net revenue and where you wanna go and growing your organization, reaching your bottom line, those are the things that you'd be thinking about as you begin to invest in, in digital media and really focusing on existing donors. So some practical tactics, taking your, uh, taking your CRM data or your, your Facebook um, audience or your email list, uploading those right to to one of those social channels like Facebook, and then targeting those people with very specific talks content around your offer. You know the Google Grant program um, for a while was really um, it was you know I think it it, it had some traction. Uh, Google's been kind of pulling back on that, but many organizations, um, you know, it's still accessible. Um, the 40,000 version 
which is the, the, the max um, that you could get with the Go Grant has been um, kind of shut down um, for now and probably for the foreseeable future. But this idea that you can have $10,000 a month um, to spend in uh, essentially paid search for Google is, is really a, a great gift to many organizations. And particularly because you know we see in December that revenue really increase. And so for those that don't wanna spend the money in paid search quite yet or don't have the budget, the Google Grant is a great opportunity to, to kind of explore and, and leverage. So, you know, looking at, uh, you know, email and communication, uh, particularly around year end, here's, here's a sample of one of the clients that, that we served. And particularly we look at this, you're like, wow, there's a lot of emails going out. And one of the, the reasons um, that we really upped the frequency was to ensure that this organization would stay top of mind at, at year end. And we'll get into the different types of impacts in a, just a different slide in a minute. Um, but, but really the point here is that relevancy and frequency are really, are really key here. So frequent communication, ensuring that those, those touches are there. And you're going to want to make sure that you're, you're observing things like the unsubscribe rate and the click-through rate, um, but different types of content. Like some of this is going to be geared towards fundraising. Some of it is going to be more story-related. And we'll, we'll show a little sample of that in a minute. Scott, is there any indication or um, proof that you can communicate too much, that it would have a negative impact on revenue? Um, there is, but that, that would be measured. What I would, I'd be monitoring is, is the unsubscribe. Yeah. How many, not necessarily the number of unsubscribes, but in terms of the unsubscribe rate. Does that match year over year? And oftentimes what we see is, is that unsubscribe rate has actually, in, in one case, decreased year, like it decreased because we st we're, we're giving them content. If we're gonna go after, all of this information is gonna be ask-based, we may turn off some of the donors. Sure. But if we find a way for that to be engaging content, inspiring content, right. so we're thinking about stories, right? Um, of impact, um, other, other types of engagement. It could be a download. It could be some other way, um, you know, 12 days of Christmas, right? How can we put a message in front of them in terms of they can communicate the impact of the organization in a way that doesn't feel like we're always asking for money? And, uh, and that's, that's really critical. So that's where, where you, you it's, a, it's a really a feel um, in terms of looking at the data and, 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 and uh, in each program. Got it. Thanks. Um, so this one's really, really easy and really basic, but just making it easier for donors to give. So uh, some of us as, uh, you know, users on, on the web, uh, we, we don't like splash pages. Um, so we, we kind of resist them a little bit because we're like, oh, that annoys me. Um, but time and time again, especially at your highest campaigns, um, I can just tell you now, doing this for 15 years they just work and the number one reason they work is because when somebody's coming to your site you've made it very clear um, what to give to and you, what we what we call reduced friction right they don't have to look for the donate button they don't have to look for what to do um, years ago there was a book that came out is uh, don't make me think it was all about user experience and so this is very simple make it easier, just make it easy for donors to give. And there's a number of tactics. The splash page is one. There's oftentimes a, 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 a timer. Um, I think I have it on the, in a slide or two um, that I can go over. But, but the, you've got the principle. Yep. Um, again, this kind of pairs with what I was saying earlier, is, is this take top of mind at your end with engaging content? Um, you know, I know that we're all trying to, to raise funds um, to have a greater impact with our ministries, but as well, these are, these are donors. They want to engage. The reason that they give is because they want to be moved by what you do. So just think about in, in Giving Tuesday season that week, uh, it's really about giving, right? But you have in this opportunity from kind of post Giving Tuesday all the way through December 25th to think about how can I really inspire our audience? 
because that year end, those last three days of year end giving is coming where I can really press hard. So what can we do? What are a few things that we can do? You know, some organizations, as I mentioned, do a, like a 12 part series, email series, and some, some do a devotional or, you know, there, there's other ways that we can engage that you can begin to think about. Um, you know, driving urgency, year end is a clear deadline and this needs to be communicated. Um, and so, you know, in terms of, of that impact and what we're, we're running on, on the header, um, you know, even having a countdown or ensuring that the deadline is, is clear um, drives that sense of urgency. If you're like most people at some point in their life, um, we all suffer from procrastination. And so this idea that as a marketer, if we can set that deadline for them, you know, communicate that urgency, um, that can help really drive those results and that, that, that decision um, to give. The other, the, the last two, um, really, this, this is really important. Um, donors give to organizations they like, try and keep it personal. Um, we found some really great effective strategies with going to the president and doing a forward of the email. That has been some of our highest open rates as you begin to think about email. And it's just having a very simple personal message at critical times. Um, this one happens you know, at the last day of the year but there may be one or two other opportunities you have in December to just do a forward of your prior email. And this, you know, it comes in the subject line, it says forward and, you know, you can ask your president or a key person in your organization to, to, to you know, write a couple sentences. Um, but this, this is, is meaningful to them um, because it has the feeling that it's coming right from the president and it can be. And then finally, just looking at the last point is just learning from the results and improve, improve next year. So, you know, one of the things that we mentioned in the campaign brief is really identifying those things that you want to test, identifying what are those KPIs. You know, one of the things that we broke out um, when we started kind of implementing this three phase strategy, we wanted to see if, if these three phases by leveraging them, if the first two phases were going to cannibalize giving in the last phase, right? Mm -hmm. If we really double down on heavy fundraising, you know, starting with Giving Tuesday and then in December, like, do we see like people have already given so they don't give again? And, and at this point, we have not seen that. We've actually seen some people um, increase their frequency of giving as a result of responding. But again, the offer, the relevancy of the message, you know, all play into that overarching strategy. But begin to learn from whatever results that you do and improve next year. Is, is kind of key there. So we have uh, just one case study and, uh, you know, in terms of how this really played out for them. Um, so, you know, with, with Open Doors, we took a three-phased approach. Um, and this was back uh, a couple years ago um, that we took this case study. But really, overall, in this time frame, um, we saw transactions increase by 120% um, and revenue increase by by um, 92 percent in Giving Tuesday, and one of the reasons that that this strategy worked, and you're going to see the the layout of the emails, is we really started the message around Giving Tuesday one week prior prior to Giving Tuesday. So we had a matching grant, we had an offer. So it wasn't about Giving Tuesday, but Giving Tuesday became in a, a natural deadline to give, and then we upped the frequency of those emails. So we started a week ahead of time, three days later, messaged it again. And then essentially the day before, we, the night before we, we had an email and then we, we leveraged three different emails on Giving Tuesday, um, the day itself. And we saw significant results. Um, if you think about like a telethon or, or a radiothon, right? This idea that you're reaching towards a goal um, we were mimicking that through email and, and we had some great success. Um, we look at the second phase. Um, this is where we were kind of thinking like, you know, is, is if we really press hard in, in the Giving Tuesday, is that going to affect the second phase? But we again saw 34.5% transaction increase, over 20% increase in total revenue. And finally, in the last week of, of December, um, you can see the numbers. So every, everything went up. Um, our Giving Tuesday um, 
and part of our December strategy was probably our biggest shifts. Um, our year end uh, stayed relatively um, on par. But part of this in thinking about your year end campaigns, create a good experience for the, for the donor on Giving Tuesday. Like that's essential. So if, since most online donations are coming in at the, the last week of the year, the last two weeks, Giving Tuesday is an opportunity for you to, to have an amazing experience, like having some sort of report back, um, you know, really good offer, reason to give, and you're really priming that audience to be the, the, the main organization that your donors are gonna give to when it comes to your end. And when we did it um, through this strategy, it was really a combination of touches, okay? And we have a philosophy here at Massworks in terms of X, Y, and Z touches. And X, or, X touches are, are essentially uh, ask touches. Y are more story-based or awareness and Z is more action-based, like we want you to do something. And, and typically that, that, that breakdown is with about 70% that are gonna be more geared towards asking. You know, uh, we have about 30, you know, sometimes 40, depending on the program, that are gonna be more geared um, towards those, those Y and Z touches. But in this case, you can see these were heavy ask because this is around Giving Tuesday, direct ask, direct ask emails. We still wanted to keep the, the offer front and center, but we started to, to put in a campaign that was geared towards inspiring um, the audience. And uh, we put engaging stories um, you know, in front of them and, and really built that case in terms of why they should give uh, to support persecuted Christians around the world. And our year end then you can see um, you know, heavy, heavy increase in, in revenue. Scott, there's still a call to action in all of those, isn't there? Or a, a donate button or a way to engage. It's yeah. not that there is not that on ramp. It's just- Yeah, there's, there's oftentimes we'll, we'll like have a, like a grayed out box or something that's a little bit softer that, yeah. that will still have a softer, we call a soft call to action yeah. and donate. Um, when, when I'm looking at the direct, direct ask emails, I mean, we're, we're having content that's direct response copy that is asking or soliciting a donation with a donate button pretty much front and center. And sometimes that donate button, you might have two or, or th three donate buttons on that email. So yeah. you get a sense as a user, like, yeah. this is what we want you to do, where the non-direct ask emails are, we want you to consume this content. And in this case, we actually... One of the things that you see that spike on December 20th, we had a, a share button that we had in all of our stories as well. And this, this one of our stories kind of went viral and somebody had ended up sharing it. And uh, you can see the, the increase in revenue because of that shareability of that email. That's great. So, I mean, this is, is, is uh, probably common sense, but you know, working with over 50 nonprofits um, in my career, um, this doesn't happen enough. <laughs> so just closing the loop for the donor and, and just showing appreciation. And one of the things that you can do is putting in the amount, um, you know, putting in what, what they raise and having a sense of accomplishment and, and gratitude. Um, this is really key um, to, to building that sense of community and moving together in terms of what, what you're accomplishing and the need that, that and, and the participation that's required to, to have the impact, the ministry impact that, that your organization um, wants to achieve. Yep. Awesome. So really the end result, um, you know, is uh, the goal was increasing digital, increased digital touches, increased response. Um, the more we can get our message in front of the right people at the right time, um, definitely increases response. We tripled email re revenue year over year, 24% um, increase in year-end year -end online revenue year over year, had an ROI of almost a 12 to one. And we essentially, because of this, changed the way that the org is approaching campaigns. Um, and since then, um, they've kind of taken this campaign strategy, you know, into their communication calendar throughout the year. Um, and so it, it really had a, a significant impact. And and it's a great time, uh, year end is, is the time to, to go out heavy 
um, with this with this type of approach. So, awesome. Yeah. Hey Scott, you shared a ton of information. I think it was all very applicable. I do have a couple of questions that have come in from the audience. Um, so these are going to be a little bit off of the topic that we were just on because I missed a couple of these early on. I want to make sure we address them. The first question that came across that I missed was, what's an interrupter? Oh, an interrupter. Oh, I'm, uh, so whenever you go to a, like a landing page or a website and there's a splash page, um, that's what we would essentially call an interrupter. So it's like a, something that's going to interrupt you from engaging you know, in terms of the website. So we're kind of interrupting your, your flow for you to do some other action. And we see that on the, we see on the web all the time, right? When you go to a random site and they pop up like download this ebook or, you know, sign up here. Those are the kind of interrupters um, that can definitely pique somebody's interest and you're going to get a portion of people that are going to engage with that. Got it. Good. Okay. Next question was, and, and I could do some research unless you've got some off the top of your head on this one. And have you seen any difference in engaging um, audiences or engaging folks for causes domestically versus international work? Is there a trend one way or another that you're aware of? Um, you know, I, the one area that I would refer, I don't, I don't know off the top of my head right now. Yeah. Although the area that I would reference is the m &R case study. They have a benchmark they put out every year. And they do, I believe, list out domestic and international. Okay. So if there's a place to look. Um, that's a fascinating, the two studies I rec highly recommend each year they put out benchmarks is the Blackbaud Charitable Giving Report yep. and then m &R. Now, if you're faith-based, um, the, the, the Blackbaud is going to be much more relevant. Oftentimes the, the m &R uh, focuses on, you know, a myriad of nonprofits, right? And sure. so that can, that can go across the board, but it is a good, um, it's a good study to look at if you just want some benchmarks with, I think they measure 3,500 organizations. So the charitable giving report has, has actually many more, but yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Okay. And then um, how do you differentiate a year end campaign if you are part of an organization that already is sending a lot of mail and emails? How do you set this apart and kind of draw attention to it? Yeah, uh, and it would have to depend on what the content is. Mm -hmm. um, for example, uh, as we begin to think about like that last week of the year, right? Um, that last week of the year, we would start messaging around, you know, uh, December 31st is, is year end. Um, hopefully you'd have some sort of matching grant. So, I mean, I think in this, we'd have to kind of dive in to say, what, what, what is the organization currently doing? Uh, what type of organization? What is the offer? Um, most organizations we work with are going for like a where needed most. So if there's like some conflict between you know, project specific work, like, you know, versus uh, where do most funds, um, typically your active audience, you're going to try to solicit where needed most from. Um, if you have other audiences that you're targeting, you might want to go after like a project. You know? But I think in that case, we'd probably have to dive in just a little bit more with some of the, sure. okay. the situation. Yeah. Okay. So here's a light bulb moment for me. So I want you to correct me if I was wrong. I have always really thought of Giving Tuesday as kind of a peer to peer crowdfunding social media focus. And then that just sort of catapults me into year end giving. And that's going to be more, my year end focus is really more on my existing donors. You said, Something about essentially Giving Tuesday is really priming your audience for this year end messaging and, and year end campaign. Yeah. So that would indicate that Giving Tuesday is really for existing donors as well. Is yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, because if you think about it with Giving Tuesday, because it's global now, yeah. if you're not as an organization putting your message in front of your donors, somebody else is. Yeah. And it becomes essential and giving Tuesday out of all three of those can like phases that I would call them yes. would be the most applicable to actually do some new donor acquisition. Yeah. But again, it would come back to the offer. 
highly recommend if it's applicable to your organization to use some sort of project or tangible offer. So in this case, for example, you know, open doors, we used Bibles, double your impact by, you know, sending, you know, your gift of this to get, and we want to reach X amount of people with this, you know, putting some of those practical, tangible dollar handles in front of people really helps to elevate. And then from a new donor standpoint and your active donors, um, you know, can, that message can resonate with both. Yeah, that's great. I, I think that's really wise, that project-based funding around Giving Tuesday. Hey, thank you so much, Scott. You have shared some great information. I think we had some great questions. And for those of you who have asked me, is this going to be available? I've had several folks send a message to say, can we get these slides? So that always means they're finding great value in that. So thank you so much. And thanks to um, all of those folks that you work with at Masterworks. We appreciate you taking time to, to share your expertise. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. It was my pleasure. So to all of you who are still listening, I want to encourage you to engage with us in September. On September 26th, we're going to have Mike Myers, who is a consultant currently, but has also served as CEO of Food for the Hungry and has an expertise in mid-level donors. So that is certainly an area we want to be addressing. We've got, we talk a lot about major donors, and we often talk about our mass donors, but we need to spend some time really caring for those mid-level givers as well. So certainly tune in uh, for September 26th. Look forward to talking with all of you then. Remember to look me up on LinkedIn. Um, look for these slides tomorrow in your email, and I will also be sharing this presentation on the Facebook page. Remember, the signatory is here to equip you and partner with you. We want to see radical generosity impact your work. So however we can help you, we want to do that. Thank you so much, and we will look for you next week.